This is an example of a cascading style sheet rule. And let's go ahead and break this rule down into the various parts that it's called. So first of all, this, this CSS uh, rule can be used in any, uh, external HT, uh, in any external CSS document, as well as in the uh, head section of, of an HTML document. So you just need to place it between the opening style and closing style tag if you're using it within your HTML. Uh, typically would go in the head section, but you can actually put it in any places in the HTML as long as it's between an open and closing style. Or as I had mentioned, in an external document, and I'll show that a little bit later. So to begin with, um, the first part, the div, is actually called a selector. And that, um, that selector can be any HTML element. So you could use a paragraph, h1, um, unordered list, ordered list, and so on. There might be some HTML elements that you can't apply styles to, but if there are, I can't think of them right now, now off the top of my head. The vast majority of HTML elements, you can apply some sort of cascading style sheet to it. Um, now you can use uh, the HTML elements. You can also give uh, like a div, you could give it an ID or a class. You can actually give an ID or a class to any HTML element, and then you can uh, have a unique area there defined. And then you can also give styles to that unique area. So you can refer to ID or class, uh, the, the name. Um, in addition to that, you can also, of course, use any HTML5 element, such as nav, uh, footer, header, uh, aside. So any of those would, would apply. And then lastly, you can actually make your own HTML elements. You can define your own unique name for an HTML element. Um, not that you would want to do this very often, but there is that option to do it. And then you could define the styles for the HTML element that you were to create. So there's almost too many choices here and it gets overwhelming. But for right now, we're just using a div and that div, that first part is called the selector. The second part here is our property. Now there's a, a whole bunch of properties that you can use. In this case, we're just changing the back, uh, not the background, pardon me. We're changing the text color and we're changing it to the value of, of blue. Uh, to find out all the different properties, uh, there's a lot of great books out there that will have them, that, that, that will have those resources, of course. But in addition to that, there's just a ton of, of websites out there. One great website is W3 Schools. And you go there and they just have a whole list of the various properties for CSS2 as well as with CSS3. The last one here is our value. Um, let me actually go on in there. And the value right here, actually. And that value, um, in this case, you can use a, a hexadecimal color, or you can just say the color as in red, green, blue, yellow. There used to be 16, but now there's a whole bunch more color choices that you can just say by name, teal, white, black, yellow, and so on. Or you can use a, a, a hex color. Um, so just note that we have a selector, property, value. Now the last part here, um, if you want to actually call this our declaration, and the declaration is what's between the opening and closing curly braces. Okay, so you always want to have those opening and curly uh, braces, and then inside that is where you put your property and value. Lastly, note that we separate our property and value with a colon, and you're always going to do that when you're typing the cascading style sheets into an embedded style sheet or, or an external style sheet. Um, and then we end it with a semicolon. So anytime that you end your uh, property and, and value, put a semicolon there, and then you can add another property and value. You can actually have as many properties and values as you care to use when styling an area of a, of a document.